Hello everybody, Prince of the Bear here, and we're back at Epcot for, I mean, the thing that everybody's coming here for, apparently. Yeah. Space 220. Space 220. Back, back, back over that way. You we see those people in line? <laughs> we got yeah. our space boots on today. Yes, luckily. I briskly walked. Yes, she did. Faster than me, obviously. Uh, luckily today, instead of like the uh, three hour wait in the sun, five hour wait in the sun, seven hour wait in the sun, the zombie bed, they're actually letting you get a reservation time before reservation is officially starting on what, 27? Yes. So we got a time and then we'll be back later to come eat. Be sure to go to 20. You heard the girl. Cocktail list here. You have your uh, spirit, your atmospheric spirits. You have uh, mood. These are like our uh, non-alcoholic beverages. Of course, you have wines by the glass. We have Coke products, Coke Sprite, Diet Coke, lemonade, iced tea. And of course, this is going to be your menu tonight. It's a lot easier to bring it. So you're going to yeah. do a lift-off course, a selection. You're going to do one selection of the star course, and then we're going to do a, a supernova sweet selection as well. Everything that we do is fantastic. Here, these are these are upgrades. Uh, you know, 24 ounce bony ribeyes. If you're a big eater. 
definitely a way to go if you like a great steak. Of course, the stuffed lobster. You can surf and turf anything you want. We're doing uh, shrimp and lobster, half lobster, half roasted mm -hmm. lobster. So that's kind of nice, nice additions to any of the, uh, of the dishes. You have side items on the bottom here. Those are going to be served family style. So, you know, some people love Brussels sprouts. They are, it is served with bacon. If you don't like bacon, we do without it. I'm vegan. Oh, okay. Well, then there you go. Well, we can get around that. Of course, we have some dishes here that we can get around that. Uh, so you'd be fine with that, okay? So here you go. Take a look at that. And then there. he also has a mango allergy. Is there anything on the menu? There is a uh, mango in some of the drinks. Uh, oh, okay. And, uh, I think let I me... saw it on one of these. This one here. Yeah, there's mango in the drink. There is mango. Let me just make sure. Okay. Uh, so, but we do have a couple hours. So vegan and mango. Yes. yes. Okay, no problem. All right. This drink menu is pretty amazing. I want to try like every single one of these drinks. And then as far okay. as the vegan options, you can only get the salad the pasta and the carrot cake. None of this other stuff, the cauliflower, these other things can be veganized, but they're vegetarian. So we've got nice little labels, gluten-free too for the pasta, which is cool. So what's up? So pretty, thank you. Now we have the Atmos Spritz. Try to say that three times fast. The Atmos Spritz is a vodka drink. We saw them pour the drink over the cotton candy. It also has orange juice and blood orange. It should be very sweet. It tastes like a Cosmo. Like just a really sweet Cosmo. I quite like it. I would give it um, two and a half out of five Cosmos. It's not six in the city level. Curious and curiouser. If it's not six in the city, maybe it's six in space? Is that a thing? I feel like it's going to lead me down a very, very, very long Google rabbit hole. But it's probably going to happen. Either way. I'm worried about blood orange and drinks, but it just might be too strong. So the cotton candy, it sort of melts out, and it's a nice, smooth, citrus-based drink. The cotton candy, you can barely, if at all, taste it once everything's all poured in, but that's a, that's a nice drink. That's a nice sit and watch the stars sort of drink. That three and a half, that's five plus. Like Disney, this, this is me coming to you as a man and asking for you to sell all your cocktail glasses. These remind me of the glasses that, uh, no man clown, animal kingdom. But I got a cocktail, which is basically like a space old fashioned. It's got bitters, honey, pineapple, maker's mark. Sounds almost made for me. Thomas, if you're watching, I know you probably are. This one's for you. Ooh. Ooh, that's good. That's like smoked turkey good. Pineapple with the maker's mark. And the honey, it's sort of just all work together. It's a nice, smooth, drinkable drink. The, bitter, the bitters on the back end, but they're not harsh at all. That's a five out of five plots. If you're a bourbon drinker, you gotta get this one on my list, 100%. It's like the size of the fork, it's the fork in the game. All the better to pierce your floating food with. Lentils, roasted bread and golden beets, oranges, king oyster mushroom, and there's some hummus on the bottom. It's gonna destroy it a little bit. You can kind of see. I'm gonna try my best to just get a little bit of everything together. I'm not a big like beet person, but let's let's just go for it, right? Hummus. I'm even gonna take some of this mushroom. my beets I had them sliced here somewhere I guess I'm, I did all right 
one and a little piece of green. Cheers to space. Space salad doesn't make me hate beets. It's quite delicious. I actually haven't had a beet dish this good since Victorian Albert's. This is delicious. Very earthy. But everything on here is earthy. The red pepper and the quinoa and the beets and the mushrooms. You got a lot of earthy items on here. It's a very balanced dish. A little citrusy. Three to five salads. It's tossing my salad. I love a good plate of rabbit food. I will never turn down a good salad. But the princess, I actually like beets. I just hate cooking them, dealing with them, touching them. They taste good, but they're messy. So, I love they have these huge oyster mushrooms. It's different sort of textures in here with the grains and the beets and the all the things, all of the things. You got over here. Miss anything? Yeah. Some hummus in the bottom. I'll get to that. Let's just load up this ye tiny space fork. It's uh, definitely gonna let you enjoy your food, but you know what? D don't take big bites. You made it a long trip to space. You should enjoy yourself. Dressing is really interesting with a very earthy salad. I like earthy salads, like you like the more fruity. This is probably not a dish for you, but it's it's nice and wholesome. It does absolutely nothing wrong. Um, I wouldn't give it a standing ovation, but I think it's a solid addition. Two and a half out of five plus. So the plating is on point here. I'm not definitely talking about the pointy crackers. You have this tuna tartare mountain in the middle. The sauce on the side. You get three crackers, which, you know, kind of worries me, but we're gonna do this fine dining style. We're gonna go ahead and just get right in here to the center of the tartare, tuna, avocado. We're just gonna load up the edge of this here. Space chip. I don't know why I'm adding space everything, it just sounds fun. Because food is supposed to be fun. Mmm. Okay. This is a, some solid tuna tartare. The tuna is definitely the star of the dish. You can taste that with the avocado and like the cucumber on top. With the, the greens on top. It actually is a nice flavor. And then the uh, cracker makes a nice little sesame seed crunch. Like, Good textures, good flavors, and it definitely will whet your appetite. Uh, I would give this three out of five plus. This drink is called the Red Star, but we have a uh, yellow one here. But, you know, we know what they're referring to. So we have Jameson in this drink, so it's gonna be a win. And then there's dragon fruit and fresh lemon, and onyx. Okay, it's got like a nice little bite of the Jameson, but the dragon fruit like really gives it like a nice little vibe. I'm digging this one. I actually kind of like this one more than my last drink. I would give it three out of five Mars. Prince is trying to start a space fight because this is going to be my very next drink. Like there's Mark and then Jameson. Would have flowed very well in my soul. Now I gotta come up with something else. Anyway, it smells like a treat. Mm. It's like sweet with the right amount of bite. I think like a, a very tart pink lemonade. Jameson. Definitely a separate drink, but if you like like citrus forward drinks, this is for you. Three and a half out of five bucks. I just want 
you guys know that I'm inhaling this salad over here. I'm eating the mushrooms. I don't even care. The citrusy dressing is good. The hummus is amazing. It's cashew hummus. Like, I'm here for this salad. I'm gonna inhale this salad. And this isn't just like a give me green salad. This is a hearty, amazing salad. Like, mad props for salad. Why am I excited for salad? I'm never excited for salad. like a berry version of a Bespin Fizz. Very delicious, I like this a lot. It actually, it does have a little bit of a coconutty taste to it, so maybe we get some minus points for that. I'd probably give it like a two out of five fez fizzies. The Bespin Fizz is better. But this is better than Flaming Bow. Hi, Mom. <laughs> I'm glad to see that a uh, dry ice is getting more love and drinks. Look, oh, you started something. Classic glass almost kills it for me, though. I oh, like this nice tall drink. Ooh. It is very much the best it is. My other coconut, not heavy, but it's very coconut forward. It's like a. It's good. Great best food fizz sort of drink. Beyond tasty though. You can feel it fizzing. Ooh. So you want to feel some kind of way about that. But I like it. I still think that the uh, my last drink was better, but this is a solid three and a half or five bucks. I would drink this. I think you drunk up here. Probably lost in space. Eh? Eh? <laughs> Got a beautiful a pasta a bolognese. This is a very small amount of bolognese on the top compared to some other ones. With some beautiful zoodles, which I'm not mad about. Like, I'm here for zoodles for days. I love how this bolognese just slid right off. This is, the space fork is very good for pasta. No spoon required. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Garlicky. Lightly seasoned. So not over seasoned, which is really good. Even though it's light on the bolognese, it just tops beautifully. Like a nice pasta. I'm here for this. This is probably one of the better pastas that I've had recently, but it's not like I'm gonna proactively come here for this. It's like a three and a half out of five pastas. It's good. It's a great, great, excellent vegan option. But it's just pasta. So it's definitely a very pretty pasta. And it's weird that it's a mix of like regular pasta and zoodles with the bolognese on top. I don't think it has all meat in it. I can't really tell at first look. There's a little slice of a little dab of a plant-based cheese on top. It's definitely a colorful dish if you like pasta. Mm. Okay. Bolognese with the cheese. Got a good flavor. And the zoodles, even though they have all this stuff on top of them and the noodles on the bottom have a nice, still like a crunch. They're not crisp, but like crunch. You can feel it when you bite into it. And a nice flavor. Uh, as far as plant made dishes go, I think this is above bar. It's not something I would come here definitely for, but like the presentation and the flavor, and like they layer the sauce so that there's more bolognese on the bottom. So you don't have to worry about it like sliding off. It's, it's a good mix. There's plenty of sauce in here for noodles you get. You know how I feel about more sauce. Three out of five pounds. So we get 
some freaks. And these were just kind of thrown in. These aren't part of the prefix. They just gave them to us. Not mad about it. They look like your typical Disney shoestring freak. And they changed it too. Not mad about that, except for I am kind of mad about this. Waffle that is not a waffle fry. Don't let Bear to lie to you. Two out of five potatoes. I mean, I'm just saying, if it's in like a waffle fry weave configuration, how is it not a waffle fry? Um, you, like, you, are you just like shaming waffles? So every, does every waffle fry have to look beautiful and pristine? Come on, hey, no, I'm gonna give this guy a good home. Nice and crisp, thick but not too thick. Lightly salted. That's a stand up fry despite how cruel the princess was to it. Give that three out of five points. Yours is gonna be the same Some beautiful roasted fingerling potatoes. Reminds me of Haleo when we had something similar, though theirs were like roasted in salt. These have a lot of salt on them, and they gave me ketchup. You guys know how I feel about ketchup with my potatoes. You know that I want that M word. But when in space, you do space ketchup? I guess. like a mini baked potato. Give it to me. Four to five potatoes. Now, all of the uh, additional sides are served family style. So you got this nice little, I'm assuming, no, oh, no, real cast iron pan with the family potatoes in it. And they're, they're some nice size. Like, I wish that some of these were cut in half, but I appreciate the dedication to like a good finger on potato. You're a nice little Cat's up bath. That's a thick boy. I like that they can do a good, nice roasted potato. A little bit of cracked salt and pepper, skin on. I'm telling you, I know that something is a little bit basic. There's nothing wrong with a fantastically done classic. Three out of five plus. Sir. As a bear, you know I had to get the fish. I'm in love with steaks. Okay, they have two fish. They have the salmon, which I got, and they also have the red snapper. But you have this nice sear on it. It looks like some uh, roasted artichoke. Some little like uh, you can tell that it's Brussels sprouts or baby zucchini. And these little roasted carrots with a little sauce. It is a nice size salmon piece. Let's see if I even need this for it. Or the knife, rather. Nope. Nice and flaky coming off. Get a little bit of that sauce. Mm. As you saw, it was served with like a, like a smoke hot box. Again, I'm not a culture fine. But uh, everything on here has like a smoky flavor. The salmon is that like soaked in with that sear and the, the, the amazing like flakiness. That's some good salmon. Close to some of the best salmon I've had at Epcot. Not even proper. Let's uh, try these, uh, these sides here. This little baby artichoke. Mmm. Super roasted, nice and smoky. I give that a three out of five. Balls. 
And we have these little babies over here. I have no idea what they are. Oh, it's bok choy. That's what that is. Very well roasted bok choy, like almost cabbage style bok choy. This you will need a knife for. Buttered and juicy. I'm always looking for new ways to cook bok choy. It's very interesting. And the carrot is standard roasted carrot. Overall, I give the whole dish a three and a half out of five pauses. The salmon's a solid four for me. The veggies are only slightly above average. Again, it's a good dish. It's not something I would come here for, but I'm not gonna walk away dissatisfied. Yeah, yeah. Now we have the celestial cocktail. I don't know if you can tell, but there's some shiny stuff in here. There's like glitter, moon dust as they call it. But it does glitter. It's got a nice like little silver glitter. I'm still digging these like stars that are cut in the lime or the lemons. Now this one has vodka in it. I know, right? This tastes more like a Cosmo than the last drink, the cotton candy one, which it should, but it's not much different. Three out of five yellow shooting stars. I don't think I'll ever be fancy enough to enjoy a drink to come in a glass like this. Martini Cosmo glasses are just not my deal. I'm always like trying more, not to spill them, actually drink and enjoy them. Okay, I'll preference the multitude of faces I'm making right now is the fact that I do not like Cosmopolitans. I have never liked Cosmopolitans, and it will be a long time before I find one that I can actually stand, let alone like. I did not enjoy that. That was not a good time. That was one and a half of my applause. But again, remember, I don't like Cosmopolitans. Oh it's like Margarita. I love the little star on the top. Now this drink has um, Contrao and a house made sour. Oh. This is like a lime margarita in Mexico with some extra sweetness to it. Like, like 10 times sweeter than a lime margarita in the Mexico pavilion. If you like sweet, this is your jam. If you don't like sweet, don't order this. Um, three out of five margaritas. Go to Mexico if you want a margarita. Here we have the Stargarita. You like star fruit vibes from like Kingdom Hearts. And this tall margarita. It's got a nice smell to it. Ooh. The sweet margarita that I'm used to, I usually prefer mine more on the sour end. But it's sparks a nice balance. The sweet in the front, sour on the back end. It's definitely uh, drinkable. It feels more tropical and spicy, but uh, I can get on board with this. Three out of five plus. Mm. these are pumpkin seeds beautiful plant base we got this nice little like merch over here cheers to our foodie fam oh lord wow Wow, that is legit 
carrot cake. Like, does not taste vegan at all. Fun fact about me, I grew up in a very strict, very Persian household. My um, diet was highly controlled by my parents. Uh, my mom has a degree in uh, nutrition. My dad and my stepmom are vegan bodybuilders. Anyway, the only cake I was allowed to have on my birthdays, which was the only time I was allowed to have a cake, was carrot cake. So if there's any cake that I know better than any cake, it's carrot cake. And this carrot cake takes the cake of all carrot cakes. Which is very surprising because of how much I have carrot cake in my life, I absolutely hate it. This cake takes the cake. I give it four out of five carrots. I did not want to like this cake at all. And I effing love it. Like, it's out of this world. Plant based carrot cake. I feel like we've seen this a lot on property, but it's interesting to see like something displayed this well. The pumpkin seeds kind of threw me, but I am very interested in how this turns out. I'm not a huge cake fan, but for you guys, we'll give it a shot. You know? I feel like the pumpkin seeds belong with carrot cake now. They mentioned it rather well, the plant based cream cheese. It's nice and smooth and tastes like cream cheese. The whole thing feels like a decadent dessert. And I don't just have any hint of the, that plant-based aftertaste you normally get with like some cheeses and things like that. Or even some plant-based creams. So I'm impressed. Four and a half out of five plus. Taffy drizzle. Do you want me to wait? Do it. Okay. Alright, enjoy guys. Thank you so much. Here we have the sticky coffee cake or toffee pudding cake. The little slices of banana on it. You saw her pour the toffee over top with these little crunchy pearls and a smear of chocolate on the side. Let's just go ahead and uh, get a nice little slice here. Covered in the toffee. Get a little bit of chocolate. Maybe we can get a pearl or two. Or not, or I'll just make a mess. I like messes. That works. Mmm. Probably is a good choice over the banana and the cake portion. The crunchy pearls are pretty similar to the pearls that you get at, on the gray stuff in uh, Be Our Guest. But the toffee helps balance out the chocolate so nothing is too sweet or too overly rich. This is a dessert I could actually vouch for. If they're not bearing a the list, it's still one of the strongest desserts I've had. Four and five. the Jupiter Fizz. Now, I am a Mooney, and Sailor Jupiter was my girl because we had the same hair color, we both love to cook, we're both tomboys and tall. I love my Sailor Jupiter, so cheers to Sailor Jupiter even though this is not the color. Okay, nice and light. The gin is strong in that one. You definitely taste it. Probably not my favorite drink, but I absolutely love this little beaker. So, three out of five gins. I still think the best gin drinks are at the Coronado. Did we accidentally, on purpose, order every finger cocktail at Space 120? Yes, we did. Are we ashamed of ourselves? Not in the slightest. That's not even the alcohol I'm talking. So, I got the, the big tang. It does not look like tang. With the uh, astronaut ice cream in here, which I'm assuming is this little innocent looking cube over here. I was expecting a dollar for ice cream for some reason. 
Uh, but I really don't know what after ice cream is, so Brent just did school me. It's like watered down Kool-Aid. I can taste alcohol. Do you taste tang though? No. I've never had tang before. It doesn't even taste like tang. It just tastes like watered down Kool-Aid. Watered down fruit punch Kool-Aid. You ever tasted somebody's Kool-Aid and doesn't know how to make Kool-Aid? That's what it tastes like. That is a one out of five calls for me. I'm not gonna waste it, but I definitely do not want that. I do come into my own sex. Yeah, that's right. I did it. I'm not sorry. Maybe a little bit. I'll probably be sorry later. No idea what's in this astronaut. Ice cream, but just to be sure. Magic girl. I just want you guys to know, as much as I hate carrot cake, and with how thick as this cream cheese frosting is, which is what really makes it like painful memories for me. I ate the whole damn thing. I literally loathe carrot cake because of childhood trauma and I ate the whole damn thing. If that doesn't tell you to not come here, or to, if that doesn't tell you to come here, I don't know what else will. So now we had that off-world experience. Thoughts on Space 220? Um, it's like a Mars 2112, if you were at New York at that time period, meets a coral reef. The floor plan is very much coral reef in space. I can definitely feel that. I would say going in with expectations being fairly low, when we looked at the menu ahead of time, 
The food was slightly above average. Agreed. I but think I don't the food was better than what I expected it to be. It's definitely better than like the Maria and Enzo's and the definitely. Vianopolis and all of that. Better than Vianopolis? Same company. Better than Vianopolis? I don't know about that. I I don't know about that. I think it's about equal to Coral Reef. Like, if you were going to choose between Space 220 and Coral Reef, you're basically, like, one for one, I feel. You just want to, like, wherever the setting is, is kind of where you want to be. As far as a vegan perspective goes, I think the vegan food was beautiful and creative for what you got, considering it's just pasta and salad with, like, a carrot cake and all of that. So um, I'm absolutely here for the vegan options. I just, um, I feel like, yeah, it's not worth $80 for the food, but it was still good. I enjoyed the drinks, so I, I, I can't, I can't complain. I definitely think you're paying for half of that price is atmosphere, the rest is food. Um, I would say it's a restaurant if you want to treat yourself, treat the family, and you guys like are like space nerds, then by all means. Do it. We're space nerds. Spoil, spoil yourselves. Have fun. It's a restaurant all about having fun. That was some interstellar ish. You're, you're not going for the food. I hope not, anyway. But either way, I think that if you get the chance to do a second reservation, that it's definitely worth visiting. I agree. But I want to know what do you guys think about the new Space 2020 restaurant? If you've seen this video, obviously, let me know what you think in the comments. If there's anywhere else around Epcot you'd like to see us go, that'll be the place to find us. Hit that notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And. We have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. And we will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe. You heard the girl.